Hello and welcome to the show. If you are a fan of the supercar, well, there is an awful lot to choose from these days. You have plenty, of course, from the established manufacturers, the likes of McLaren, 600LT, Ferrari, Lamborghini, and so on and so forth. There are a whole slew of them, but there are plenty of other more unusual options, alternative options, if you like. For example, you could have, admittedly, very expensive options, the Ital design, the Zeruno. I can't say it's my favourite looking... It's an intro... I can't decide whether I like it or not. It's different, that's for sure. Quite unique. Uh, <laughs> but you have these sorts of uh, little bit more unusual vehicles. Now, I should point out, while we are going to be doing a showdown to see which one will come out the fastest, we are limited by what we have in Forza. Things like the Hurricane Performante, the Ferrari Pista, we don't have them in the game. We physically can't use them. We also only have 12 slots in the lobby. That's just the limit of Horizon 4, which means we can only run 12 cars. So it was up to people to decide what they wanted to drive. There are also some cars that just aren't competitive in this field. Things like the Nissan GTR. We were going to run one. It was horribly slow. No one wanted to drive it. So there's a reason why... There are many reasons why the XYZ car is not particularly in this showdown. Also, I quite like throwing in a couple of oddballs along the way to see how they fare. Cars like the Corvette ZR1, for example, this, more of a supercar killer, shall we say, much cheaper than the rest, perhaps a little more track-focused than, than the rest, would also include the Zenvo, the ST1, which is honestly, I think, more of a muscle car than a supercar. It's a thousand horsepower of twin charge mayhem and very little in the way of composure. I love it, but <laughs> it's quite bonkers. So we would set these vehicles off with uh, five different events to see which one would come out on top, starting with a race around the Astmore Heritage Circuit. Now, this is a fast track. We're trying to have the races so that we get a mixture of different circuits. This is one of the fastest tracks you'll find in Horizon 4 in the main game, certainly not custom-built stuff. Uh, yes, there are some corners. There are some quite nasty corners, in fact, for the cars to have to deal with. This particular one that we are heading up to here, one of the nastiest of the lot. But there is also a very long back straight. It's generally quite a fast, quite a fast circuit. For me, all-wheel drive, naturally, we get a pretty good launch in the Zeruno. We will have a little bit more straight-line speed than the NSX. That had a decent grid spot and, again, all-wheel drive launch, not too bad does struggle in terms of the top end, the NSX. I say one of the least powerful cars at around 570 horsepower, but it's also just about half the power you get from a Zenvo, so <laughs> it was perhaps struggling a little bit for top end. I mean, my car is essentially an R8 underneath. I think it actually has a couple of less horsepower than the R8 that was running in this particular one, but uh, it made up for it with quite a lot of grip. Turns out, very, very nice car to drive. At the front of the pack, it would be the Pagani Wara that was leading the way. The Zepho in second, as I said, always a little bit of an, an oddball in this. It's, uh, it's unbelievably fast down the straight, but so difficult to get through these corners. This is where I can close up on the car, but the difficulty I have is if we head through the second part, I cannot carry the sort of speed that I want to because there's a Zenvo in the way. That then makes me slow on the straight, where I'm already not the fastest, and off goes the Ford. The Aventador also would come soaring past after an iffy start, and that Aventador may be a little too much, but certainly a bit too much speed. For me, it gets up the inside of the Ford as well, we'll move into a third place. I get brave, think about trying to go around the outside of the GT. I have good grip to try, and I have the traction on the exit with the all-wheel drive. You see the Ford get a little bit of a slide trying to put the power down, but ultimately, the acceleration of the GT is a little too much for me. Second place, that wasn't going to last in the Zenvo hands for particularly long, as the Aventador will have a go. And the Zenvo knows it can't fight that. The Aventador is much, much faster through the corners than the Zenvo. The Zenvo's only chance is to try and pass it on the straight, but the Aventador is probably the second fastest car when it comes to straight line speed, so yeah, the, the Zenvo can't hold on to that. It's now a case of can that vehicle hold on to third. I had to be a little bit careful because it wasn't particularly big a gap back to the Corvette that was now coming to join the fun as the Ford tries to get up alongside the Zenvo. That can't quite match. The, the ST1 for speed. The 600 LT was in a little bit of no man's land behind the Corvette, but not uh, again, not all that far back should anything particularly go wrong. It's the Ford's turn to have a look around the outside. Can't do it. Wanted to cut back to the inside a little bit. Uh, uh, too little space for that. Too much on the grass. Can't get the power down. And the Zenvo continues to frustrate us a little bit for another lap. Because he just cannot do anything about it. Up at the front, 
the Aventador had caught the Wara as they were going side by side through this opening section. The Aventador eventually coming out the better of the pair there. The Fords finally got the opportunity at once. It's alongside coming over these crests uh, and the Zenvo cannot carry the speed through these next corners. The Ford gets itself to the inside, leaves the door quite nice and wide and open for me. Uh, I can carry the speed. This is the corner where my car is probably one of the best through there. If I get it right, I can carry mega, mega speed with the vehicle and the Zenvo's dropped back. And the Zenvo actually had quite a bad exit out of there, which helped me. I need that help because I know how fast that car is. You can see it is going roaring towards, but you get it slowed down for the next corner and the Zenvo hasn't immediately repassed. And that was the important thing. I always knew the danger is if we passed the Zenvo and then got immediately repassed, we'd get stuck. You just wouldn't necessarily be able to do much about that sheer straight line speed. However, once clear, once we were clear by the end of the straight, that was fine because I could be much quicker. I could be later on the brakes through these corners and carry more speed even though I was a little wider the apex on that particular. But even me missing that corner almost would be faster than the way the Zenvo would take it. And the Zenvo then also had to start worrying about the Corvette that was behind having a look. Um, so I was clear. I was, in, I was in the clear. Up at the front, the Aventador was continuing to pull away from the Wara. Now I got a smidge lucky here. The Ford just dropped a wheel, I believe, over the edge of the tarmac. Just put a wheel on the dirt through that corner. Lost the back end in doing so. And sliding wide on the exit gives me a golden opportunity to sneak the car back up into third place. And I mean, that's the advantage you get with the all-wheel drive cars at this sort of a track. I do that, I don't have a problem with my car. The Aventador does that, there's no problem. But for the Ford, that touch, that tiny little drop over the edge of the circuit onto the dirt is enough to put the car sideways and it just costs you all that momentum. I knew I was going to have to be doing defending on this final lap. Ultimately, the Ford perhaps a smidge faster than me as the Aventador continues to extend the lead up at the front. I mean, that's some three seconds away. I also know I can't match the Wara. Not for speed, not for pace around here. I've got no option, no hope against, uh, against that. But I did have a chance at defending from the Ford in as far as I was good at this corner. And I had to get this corner right. And it wasn't, it wasn't the best ever line, but I do at least make the speed on the exit. And that was the important thing, is I could get the power down. I could get out of the corner really, really rather well. And then this was the big, the big overtaking opportunity to Ford. It was going to have to make it stick the long way round. And in the end, the Italian design is just a little bit too good. I could carry the speed on the inside and GT could not make that stick. The Aventador was going to go and take a, in the end, four second victory over the Wara. I would be a fair way back, but you would get third fending off the Ford. A little unlucky for the GT in that to wheel over the curb. Caused that, caused that trouble. Um... The Corvette would in the end beat the Zenvo, but that uh, just about <laughs> holds on ahead of the McLaren. Then we'd have the R8, the Mercedes AMG ahead of the 488, the Aston Martin DBS, and the NSX would unfortunately fall all the way to the back of the pack. An exciting first race, quite a spread out first race. The events at all far too fast for the rest of us. What about a much more technical circuit though. So come to one of the street circuits in Edinburgh. This, a lot more stop-start. Yes, there is a back straight here, but it isn't particularly massive. So test the cars in a completely different way. I had quite a nice starting spot on the grid, as did the 600 LT, as did the Pagani Wara in this. Of course, I was going to lead the way through the first corners by virtue of my all-wheel drive acceleration. But this track also does suit the Italzo. This track really, really suits my car uh, because it A, handles very, very well. The traction is nice getting out of some of these slow corners, but it's it's the confidence I think you can have with this car uh, around a track like this one that is really rather nice indeed. The Aventador had already got itself up to fourth. I was able to start pulling. I was, start pulling, I was able to keep a little bit of a gap. The Wara is way faster than me down the straight, but I could just about get myself far enough away uh, that when we got to the corners I would have the advantage and as time, say as time passed, we continued to lead the way, perhaps pulled a little bit of a, a margin over the wire behind, unfortunately I would slip up. My mistake in this one, I just ran wide out of a corner and that would let the Aventador uh, go through. Now I wasn't completely done with this, the Aventador was then on a wonky line and made a small mistake, I had to try and be brave, it's a long way around the outside of a car, if anything can do it, perhaps the Atal design could, and we make it stick heading on to the back straight. Unfortunately, while I have the traction advantage over the rear-wheel drives, I do not have the traction advantage 
over that Aventador. That would come flying towards the outside. I try to defend, but I can't quite hold it through there, and the Aventador would eventually take the lead. I was perhaps not too surprised by that, in all honesty. We carry good speed through turn one, but I know it's always a little bit, uh, be a little bit challenging. Now I've got to worry about the Wara, though, because in all of our fighting, as the Aventador then runs a smidge wide, in <laughs> all of our fighting, the Wara is very, very much back into the fight. The 600 LT is not too far back in this circuit either, neither is the Ford GT. Uh, the Corvette was struggling a little bit more with the traction around this track compared to uh, some of the rest of us. Uh, the Wara did find its way back past me, uh, as I have to now look for that once more spectacular outside overtake. Think better of it. Not quite going to happen through there. Uh, the Wara then runs a smidge wide coming onto this. I say main straight. It is the closest thing we get to a main straight. I can't quite match that, though, for pace. I see a very bright green McLaren behind and have to start... Uh, Worrying, am I going to be passed by that one again? The Wara struggling, it's a wheel up on the curb. That gives me the opportunity we need in the Italian design to try and take that second place away. Although through the chicane, still not quite where we want to be. The Aventador now running away, although he's clearing all the street furniture. McLaren's up on the outside having a look, uh, but won't quite get through all of that. My traction off of these slower corners it is what eventually just fires me past the Wara. I can just get on the power, and the Pagani could not use all of it out of there. The Ford has caught up to that little group as well as we as we fought. I mean, that was a big, big fight for position between, well, between three of us in the end. The Italian design eventually coming out the victor of all that. And we then focus on we trying to chase down the Aventador. I didn't actually really expect it to be able to, to do much. It was important to make sure that I was never in... I was never in a danger of uh, being repassed by the wire. I never wanted the wire close enough to me when we got to a straight that it would simply be able to out-drag me. I'll get a little bit, i say perhaps a little bit lucky. The Aventador makes a little mistake through turn one and that gives me that little bit more of a, I say a, of a potential, potential chance. The wire is still there, sniffing around, having a look, can't make it. The 600 LT much, much preferred this circuit. Uh, the, again, I think the more, the more stop-start nature, the slower nature of the corners worked very well for the McLaren. The Ford was back there. Uh, I was actually expecting the Ford perhaps a smidge closer, but I think, I think both the Ford and the Corvette struggled a smidge on the old uh, traction front out of some of these slower corners. Struggled to put the power down, certainly in the way that some of the others of us were able to. As you could imagine, the Zenvo didn't have a good time around here. While it had been entertaining to watch it, but as well, this circuit was too too technical for the for the car. And while the likes of the R8 and the NSX and so on would enjoy that all-wheel drive benefit, they were not as fast just in general around here. There was it was almost a, a sort of couple of uh, packs. <laughs> there was a, a part A and a part B of the of the showdown, if you like. Now the event door actually had a little bit of a scruffy final lap. Cleared a lot of street furniture for me, which was much appreciated, uh, which meant I was actually absolutely flying by this stage of the race. We were absolutely flying in the in the Italian design, and I needed to be because I was never really more than a second certainly away from that wire and that's you know a mistake or something will cost you that much sort of time uh, the Ford very slowly catching up back to the, uh, to the McLaren but it was going to be too little too late to head around here on the final lap I had a very very good final lap with the Atal design and the Aventador had a little bit of a wobbly one and it actually meant that overall I took the fastest lap of the race although I do think in general, the Aventador was faster. Certainly, the Italian design was the second fastest car there. Uh, beat the Wara, the 600 LT, the GT. The Corvette was it struggled a little bit around here. The Mercedes, the AMG GTR, would win the best of the rest ahead of the 488. The Zenvo would be down in ninth, although it did beat the R8 and the NSX. The Aston Martin did not particularly enjoy this circuit. That is perhaps not the largest of surprises, shall we say in this one. That was a, it was a tough circuit. That was a, a pretty nasty circuit indeed. The Italian design came very good. So, on to the drag races. We're going to do two drag races. Two, I say, kind of different. One was going to be your more normal. I think it's quite. I don't think it's quite half a mile drag race, but we're going to run at the airfield. Okay. Now, launch was going to be important here. The all-wheel drive cars are going to have an advantage, although it isn't quite a quarter of a mile a drag race. Off the line, the event at all would shoot into the lead, a position that we didn't really expect to change much. The Italian design didn't have an amazing start, but did get away from the R8 and the NSX. Here comes the power. The Zenvo on the outside was flying towards me, as was the Wara, but they couldn't catch in time. Over the airfield drag strip, 
But the Aventador wins comfortably, and I mean comfortably, in the end. Hell, it's a second quicker than fourth place. The Italian design would get the second place, though, narrowly beating. The Zenvo, the Wara, and the Ford were all going very quickly towards the end of that. The McLaren gets up to seventh ahead of the 488. The NSX would drop to ninth after a good start, ahead of the Corvette, Aston, and Mercedes. We would then run on a much longer drag strip. Now, this runs up the motorway, I think about two miles. So this is not only well, a drag race, a little bit of cornering, but it is all flat out in these kind of cars. This is kind of more your top speed test for the vehicle. So again, similar story off the launch, we get ourselves to second, and there goes the Zenvo. On this much longer run, the Zenvo absolutely buggers off into the distance, chases after the Aventador and would pass it. Little the Aventador could do about that. The 488 actually had a lot of speed in this one. The 488 really did not do too badly whatsoever. That was going off chasing after the Ford GT as they head up towards what is, I guess, the nastiest corner. Let's say nastiest corner on, on this on this race. Uh, we then kind of all settled into just about where our top speeds lay. Not much more I could do. The R8 was very close, funnily enough, very closely matched with the Atel design. Uh, we would, though, take that position. So Zenvo 1, we had kind of expected that with all the power. Zenvo 1 from the Aventador. The Wara beat the Ford GT. The 48 had a very, very good performance as I beat out the Audi Corvette. We get 8th ahead of the Aston Martin. Preferred this length. McLaren, not quite so good with the old uh, with the old top end here. The Mercedes would, in the end, beat out the NSX for that 11th place. Our final test... That would be a naught to 100 to naught. So not only are we testing launch, acceleration, we are also testing braking. I was fairly confident that my car would at least be decent in this one. I hope that my all-wheel drive launch would be good. Um, I figured that that, sh that should help, you know, getting off the line quite nicely. We get to 100, we get the car stopped, and that was the distance at which I would managed to make it, and I would be the one to set the benchmark. The Zenvo would go next. Now, we expected, A, the Zenvo to wander all over the road, because it's really difficult to get the power down, but it might struggle. Uh, it turns out, Zenvo did pretty well. T it turns out, the Zenvo was not actually as bad at this as we expected. It has so much power. If you have got it used, it gets to 100 quite quickly, but it's difficult to get it used. The NSX, maybe not quite so much. Still not too, and we've seen a lot bigger a spread in these challenges when we've done them before. Um, the NSX launch will help it, but it isn't the most powerful, fastest car here. The Wara does a, a pretty damn good job of getting that car to 100 and getting stopped. As I said, so far, not a particularly big spread between the vehicles. The Aventador, always likely to be one of the favourites for this. Lots of power, lots of acceleration, and that will put the car in the lead for now. Up next, the 600 LT would run. Again, perhaps struggle a little bit more with the launch. Just about gets it stopped. A very, very similar point to my car. Uh, kind of surprised to see the Zenvo beating that one. The Corvette, uh, very good brakes on that thing. Uh, do get it slowed down quickly, but it doesn't quite get to 100 as fast as some of the others. I think this might perhaps have showed, while I have the launch, my acceleration is not the best in the Italian design. The Ford GT, again, likely to be good here. Quite a light car, relative speaking, in this field. That gets stopped nicely. The Mercedes does not quite make it uh, as uh, stopped as quickly as some of us, but it doesn't go shooting off down in the distance as the NSX did. The Ferrari would go next. We saw that did quite well at some of the drag races, and that actually got stopped nicely in all of this as well. The R8, uh, kind of interested to see how that would fare compared to the Ital design, and pretty bloody similar is the answer to all of that. And then finally, we have the Aston Martin that we weren't perhaps expecting all that much of, but a fantastic run would get that car stopped incredibly quickly. It must be an absolutely perfect launch for the Aston. <laughs> Any other, because, uh, yeah, it struggled for pretty much all of these, and it did very bloody well. So, on to the... I sort of fly by the results, if you will, of this. It would be the NSX that is furthest down down the runway, down the drag strip, if you like. Um, as I said, not by the craziest margin. We've seen lots, lots bigger margins in these tests before. The Mercedes would follow it. The R8 would be up next. And then everything gets very, very close. It is very, very close in this. The R8 is a little further down the road. The McLaren does get stopped slightly further away than my car. Then it would be the Zenvo, an impressive performance from that Corvette, uh, very close to that section as well. We'd have Ford, not Ford GT, sorry. We'd have the Ferrari 488 up next that would uh, lose out to the Wara. Little bit of a gap, not massive though, for the Ford GT. 
we then find, I forget, the other side, because the camera gets stuck on the Aston. The uh, Aventador would win this. Aston Martin, the DBS, actually did very, very well. The DBS did very, very well indeed on that one. So, there we go. That is the 0 to 100 to 0. And that completes the table. So, on to the points. Now, I use the BTCC point system for this. And it will be the Aventador that takes victory. Perhaps a little bit unsurprising. In this, after all, it won just about everything. But <laughs> it won everything or came second. Not a massive surprise that uh, the Aventador would be up at the top. The Wara was one of the big surprises for us. We hadn't necessarily expected that to be competing right at the very top. As I said, I'm not quite sure why, but the Wara would take second. The Ital design would take third and narrowly beating the Ford GT. Uh, the Zenvo would take fifth by virtue, I guess, of just its insane top speed. <laughs> the Zenvo's huge top speed for the long-distance drag races and some decent performance in the... Or 200 to naught and, and the faster races meant that it could could still score some points in this field, but it was very difficult to drive. The Corvette would get sixth, and we're talking a narrow sixth place, beating out the 600 LT, uh, tied on points with the 488. However, on virtue of a higher, having had the highest finishing position in a single event, the McLaren would go seventh. The Audi R8, that would beat the Aston Martin, that moves up to tenth, virtue of a fantastic run in the naught 100 to naught. Uh, the Mercedes would be 11th with the NSX, unfortunately, at the bottom of the table. However, after we had finished filming everything, we did learn the NSX has a little bit of a hidden talent. You see, we decided to do a reverse drag race. Because, of course, why not when we have 12 supercars? Let's see what's fastest in reverse. The Italian design is very quick initially. And then not very quick after that. And the NSX, well, that goes chasing after the Aventador and the Zenvo, and that would go and take victory of this. The Aventador second ahead of the Zenvo. The R8 was pretty good in reverse. The Wara not too bad. Uh, the My car was terrible, as was the Ford, as was the McLaren. The Mercedes was by far and away the worst of the lot. So, if you need a supercar to be very fast in reverse, the NSX is the one to go for. Helpful, useful supercar advice right there. Mine was pants. Uh, but there we go. Conclusion time, I think, in all of this. The Aventador was the fastest. The Aventador was, I say quite comfortably, the victor, while, yes, the ultimate top speed, the Zenvo could beat it. The really fiddly circuits, my car, the Zeruno, could give it some grief. I don't think, ultimately, it was ever going to beat the Aventador, uh, that the Lamborghini was just a little bit too fast for everything. The Wara did very well. I have to say, the Wara surprised me in that one. Again, I keep saying I don't quite know why I was perhaps surprised by the Wara, uh, but it is very, very fast. Uh, while I could beat it at the technical stuff everywhere else, and very smaller drag races, of course, with that all-wheel drive advantage, everywhere else that Wara was very quick. Likewise, the Ford, that was a very, very quick car. Uh, the Atel design, as I said, it did better than I thought it would. It's a really nice handling car for what is essentially an Audi R8. Uh, it comfortably beat the normal R8. And, yeah, handling depart on the very tightest, most technical of circuits, I think the Atel design was probably the best handling of the cars. Uh, certainly when you're dealing with low-speed acceleration zones, the combination of grip and traction from that car was near enough unbeatable. The Corvette put in a good show, as you would expect from it. Ultimately, not quite able to match some of the some of the vehicles for sheer acceleration. The Corvette struggled a little. I'm surprised a little bit. The Corvette's quite powerful, 750 odd horsepower in that thing. Um, but I think it struggled a little bit with traction against some of these some of these vehicles. It seems and was yeah not not quite matching some of the uh, higher end vehicles. The Zenvo may be the biggest surprise of the lot, actually being half competitive. It was put in as a joke car. Um, I say it's a joke car, it's put in as, a, as that oddball to see what it might do. It's, I reckon it's more of a, it's, it's more of a muscle car in some, some regards. It's bonkers, it's very expensive and all, but it's a completely bonkers car. But it's, it's just that sheer, sheer power of the vehicle was enough to make it competitive in a couple of things. Horrendous to drive on some of the circuits, but that brutal, brutal power was enough. And... I say I would hate to say it, given the choice of all of these cars, the Zenvo is the one that I would have. Not because it is the best, but there's something special about the Zenvo. There's something just brilliantly wacky about the Zenvo, and I love it. Even if it's not as fast as the Aventador or the Wara, or as nice to drive as the Atal design. The Aventador wins the fastest car prize. The Zenvo wins your heart, pretty much. And there we go. That is going to be it. For this video thank you all very much for watching 
And until next time, uh, yeah, goodbye. Bye.